too, man. Right here cleaning some burgers. And it rained this morning, the sun came out. She's the humid one out there. We're lucky here in Oklahoma. I mean, we get it all. We get cold, hot, humid, dry, wet. All of it. You know, sometimes in this, I don't know what it exactly means, but is this a like dog days of summer? I don't know if that's correct use of that term. But this is a like dog days, man. Uh, yeah, you, most of us, I mean, not so much this year, I got a late start, but most of us have been hatching, taking care of chicks for a long time, still got something to need to take care of, starting to need to worry about what we're going to do with these breeder birds still in breeding pens. Well, how we, we got some birds maybe ready to go into conditioning pens. I love hatching. I love setting up breeding pens. I love collecting eggs and hatching them. I love the chicks. And about a week later, I hit this like seven month wall to where hey, you just, I just pack them feeding water for them, waiting for them to finish out. You know, and then, then you roll back around and you start seeing something in there. And it, again, and get me a batch of chicks that the females are five months old a little older the males are six seven months old I get back into it I get back into it well these dog days of summer man it gets hard on a guy um and it's a struggle you're like dude you're crazy you're spending why are you spending so much on chicken feed man look at that stack of receipts in the truck dude that's you got a thousand bucks worth of you could have went and some fishing poles and hell I gotta buy a whole boat for that. I'm tight one. I buy stuff broke down and fix it. Uh, and you just somehow you gotta put yourself in. Man, you're gonna have a county fair coming up. Your kids is gonna want some birds there. You're gonna have a state fair coming up. Gonna have some shows as early as around here, October. I know there's some people maybe up north quite a bit earlier than that. You're going to want some birds then, so now's not a good time to be effing everything off. When we should be the, the most determined and the most serious, a lot of us are burnt out. Since some dog days, man. God. Just kick yourself in the ass. Clean your birders. It's right here, set up. It's ready to go. Set up for the new batch. Give them this water nipple for a couple weeks or just until I can't keep it full no more. And then I've actually been using using this waters, as you can see here. But, you know, I got one simple little light hanging back there because they don't need much heat. I'll kick that on. They'll have one little spot they can get warm in the, the cool mornings. It's still get cool uh, this back here as you can see I, what I did was I limed that can't really get the bottom of these old pins perfectly clean so I'll just throw some lime in there uh, it's just powdered ag lime barn lime you can get it by a I don't know how big that sack is it's just a few dollars I mean I just have a bucket full of it set here I just clean the burger out I throw lime around I scrape it around with my trusty scoop scoop up what I can I have a vacuum that I normally would vacuum it up but I haven't even been doing that this year I haven't went to the house and got it out here and it floods out here sometimes so just get run uh, so I just throw the shavings in but as hard as it is that's how you control your coccidiosis in your chicks you, you have to you got to stay on top of that and keep them brooders clean. Uh, I'm guilty. My last few batches of chicks, I usually end up... I've, I've, I've went out and just said, I ain't going to deal with them. I'm going to cut my losses. Quit while I'm ahead. And, and just went out there and called my last 80 chicks I hatched when they was a few weeks old. Just, I didn't have grow-out pins for them. 
nothing. But that's my own fault. Because if I, if I could have 10 birds, I'm going to hatch 100. I don't care if I have to call some of them too early or uh, I, I, I'll set up a pen and I'll, I'll try to keep my best ones put up and I'll set up a pen that's maybe overcrowded but I'll let them out every day. So it takes up, they're running around the whole yard every day. Fenced in yard with, but now I have some puppies and that's hard to do right now but I'll get that situated. Um, I hatched, I hatched too many. You know, for what I got, I, I have a grow-up pen. I, I can keep about 20 birds in a grow-up pen, and grow-out pens. And then I have a less and less conditioning pens because I used to use a lot of round pens to condition the birds I would sell. I say sell, I'd usually end up giving them away, but it, it is what it is. But that way the kid could take a bird and they can see it for what it is. I'm not one of the guys that's gonna cut the sickle feathers off so you can't show it or whatever, you know. <laughs> And I definitely ain't that good. I'm just a prop, just a propagator, man. That's all I do is reproduce chickens, man. I'm not, I'm not even a breeder. I take other people's hard work and try to hatch as many as I can from it. But I got off track there. But that's the important part. Is it's so important right now to get these young ones taken care of. You know, when you get up and they, when they start needing parasite control, they start needing dipped. You gotta stay on top of all that stuff. Stay on top of the clean brooders. Um, I'm guilty of it. You know, this is something that I'm learning. And I was the times I'd brood chicks. I never done nothing. They, by the time I took them out of that brooder, they was all just standing on poop in there. And I, I just thought that's how you did it. I know no different. They're not hatchery birds. They don't hardly die for nothing. They just go up and run around the yard. Same as any other damn bird would, you know. But... Nah, that's, that's not right. You gotta stay on top of it. And keep your just get up and kick yourself right and square in the butt if you have to. I know more and more. This last year, that's I, I wouldn't have a dang chicken on the place. There were some times I was literally in tears to come out here. My son had to do a lot of work for me, and I burnt him out completely on chickens. I've let him get completely away from him for that fact that he helped me out so much in the last year that if he don't want nothing to do with chickens. You know, he'll, he'll go on a chicken road trip with me though if I'm going on a road trip it's usually chicken related the only reason I really care to leave here he won't go with me so that's cool we'll take the RC rock crawlers and stop and do some crawling it's good fun what, you know, whatever you do with your kids you know when he wanted to fish we fish when he want chicken we chicken on an RC truck and he's 17 man he's going to wake up one day and yeah, he ain't gonna wanna go do RC trucks with his dad. Not until he gets back and settled in his 20s or approaching 30 maybe or gets gets well off in life and then we'll, I'm, I'm sure I'm see me and him will be RC trucking and chicken showing and fishing. It's not much of a hunter. You don't like to kill stuff. I'm a killer. It happens. I wasn't born that way. I was, but I have been. I prefer to kill my food that I eat. It, it gives you more of a connection with it. I'm not saying I go out there, and especially anymore, I don't do anything, but there's a time where a lot of what I ate, I, I killed it. I went out there in the woods, the lake, caught it, shot it, cleaned it, ate it. Did that because I was hungry. Didn't have money to go to the grocery store before. Not proud to say it, but it's happened. It's a little different, dude. It ain't, it, it ain't a... It ain't a sporting event no more when you're going down there because you're hungry. I've, I've went fishing for people when I was better off. And I went fishing for the sole reason to give them fish to some people. And they, they needed some food in their freezer, man. It's not They wasn't starving at the time and just say, hey, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not here to judge nobody, but man, I'd go catch, me and my buddy catch 30 catfish and clean them and, you know, give them a, give them a, some poundage, some fish in there. You know, they can always go round up some cornmeal. But that's just kind of part of it, like the survival mentality. You just do what you gotta do. If you need, need to get up and you're burnt out and you don't even want no damn chickens, and get tired of buying feed. And go out and call real hard. If you got too many, you got birds you don't need. 
Get rid of them. That's what it's all about. Numbers. Dwindle them down to keep the feed bill in check. We'll forget about this feed bill this time of year. Come November, December, we'll be filling up breeding pens and collecting every egg we can and ready to hatch 500 more if we can. And as soon as we got 500, we're going to be tired of paying that feed bill, tired of cleaning those brooders, tired of cleaning pens, tired of moving chicks around. But we're still going to do it for October, you know. October, there's going to be a show. You can screw up your whole show season right now. I know. I got to do something new. We spend a little too much time screwing around on Facebook. <laughs> I couldn't say it with a straight face, sorry. Uh, hey, I'm going to end this on to all my haters out there. Let me get to where you can see me right now. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You all hate and hate and hate. And I eat it up and turn it into motivation. You can hate to motivate. That's dumb. That's still true, though. We'll see you.